Just give me an outlook of what you think the rest of winter might look like. Already we have seen three outbreaks of polar air. Usually for the whole winter we get three or four. On a mild winter, if it's a harsh winter, we might get seven. We're on the track to get seven polar outbreaks. Don't expect it this week. Maybe just after Christmas, be ready for another outbreak of sub-zero temperatures. Does that mean it's above or below normal, or is that right that'll on average? Be, that'll be below normal during that several days that we've got the high pressure from the Arctic here. And then it will get amazingly warm in between, and we'll get the next one. That's, that's how we call a harsh winter. Sometimes it has extra snow because of warm to cold. Sometimes it has extra wind because of the switch from warm to cold. Always, we hate the cold when it goes to 20 below zero, especially when it's just been 50 yeah. degrees. Now, how do you think we'll enter planting season this year? Obviously, Iowa was punished a little bit with a little too much rain last year, but what do you think 2014 spring will look like? Right now, we can't tell the spring, and winter doesn't give us much indication. But we do have some indication that we'll be getting more than the normal number of precipitation events that should be able to replenish the subsoil moisture that has pretty much diminished during the last couple of months of the growing season in 2013. Uh, can we tell yet whether or not 2014 would be an average precipitation year or severely below like in 2012? Or, or what point in the year can you tell that? You normally can't tell until the summer pattern has established. And often that is late May when the things are really in place. I like to tell people the earliest we can tell is the first day of spring, which is the, as we get into the end of March. And so sometimes then we can see what the early summer pattern will be and definitely the spring pattern. And sometimes you don't really don't know. But for the most part, we could tell that last year was getting wet and it was going to stay wet until summer came. And then it went dry and it did as expected. So occasionally we can tell that but mostly we can just see the tendency and there will be a tendency this year, at least as of now, to start off a little bit moist and to stay on the variable side slightly. So a little bit to the dry side, but still could give us an above average crop yield by a small margin. <laughs> 2012 was obviously an extreme year. In your opinion, is that going to be something we see a lot happening in the future, the volatility of the climate? We think 2012 was the first of the volatile years that go on for 25 years. The volatile years are both like 2012 and way up to record high yields like 2008 had. And so we can, we'll see more of that ups and downs during the next 25 years than we have in the past 18. So not necessarily consistently dry or consistently wet, just back and forth. Back and forth, extreme years. Today you were talking about growing degree days a lot and how producers can use them to better find out what the crop will look like. Explain a little bit more on that to me. The growing degree day is one of the, one of the first ways to use temperature in evaluating what's going to happen to our crops. But we don't use it as much as we really should. We might use it for when to plant a hybrid or when to spray for insects, and that's a good use, but its real value is when will the crop mature? How much weight will it put on before it matures? That's the value of the growing degree days. If they're falling behind normal after pollination, that is usually adding to our yield. That's the first thing people should keep in mind. And finally, how can producers keep an eye out on the weather? What, what could they look at maybe to just give them a hint of what might happen a month out? Is there anything they can, can do or keep an eye on? If you want to know what is going to happen a month ahead, you are pretty much looking at things like El Nino and La Nina, these long-term things, because the National Weather Service outlook is now they have a 15-day outlook, and it's pretty shaky. Uh, you're almost better off just look at the trend. If it's El Nino dominant, that the trend will be on the favorable side. If it's La Nina, that the trend will be unfavorable. That's the best we can do right now beyond two weeks.